Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start the meeting. Um, this is a special planning commission meeting, um, and calling it to order. And do I do the roll call or do you? Uh, either way, you I you can do the roll call. <laughs> I'd be happy to. And this is the the February 26th yes. special meeting. Pelzell. Yes. Here. Bilden. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Donnell. Yes. Styles. Yes. Also present uh, observing is A.J. Williams. Also present is Planning and Zoning uh, Administrator Denise Swinger. Okay, um, so we're going to have a the review of the agenda, which is one thing. We're doing a conditional ap use application um, for the Calypso Grill. Um, have one communication. So. Do you guys want to hear the minutes from last meeting real quick? Like, go over. Yes. So. Apparently so. On page four. Let's do it one page at a time. Um, any corrections on page one? Page two. Page three. Page four. Yeah, on page yes. four, uh, down to the section uh, agenda planning. I think in the first paragraph, Swinger noted the need for a special meeting for February 23rd. I think that should say 26th. Thank you. And then at the bottom of the page, uh, all present with the exception of Doden instead that they could be able to attend the special meeting on the 26th. But I think I, I don't remember saying that, but all present, not that it matters. Including so the excellent Mr. Doden stated. <laughs> Got it. All Got it. To review the video. Um, page five. Is there a motion to approve minutes as amended? Move. Second. You want to call? Oh, what? You can just do an all in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I abstain. Okay. All right. Um, moving on, we have one communication. Uh, do you want to talk about it? Oh, it's fine. Um, it's just from a resident living nearby the uh, business uh, establishment at 1535 Xenia Avenue, um, just writing a letter of support for this business. Okay. Um, so I'm going to open the public hearing for conditional use application. Um, are we going to hear from you first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Brian Rainey is here. This is the owner of Sunrise Cafe in town, and he is opening the Calypso um, Grill and Smokehouse at the uh, location of the uh, previous Mexican restaurant. Um, the and When I reviewed through the planning uh, zoning files, we have like, we keep files now by address and historically went back through. Um, uh, Mr. Avalos, uh, Avalos he, um, had, he originally came in to get a permit uh, for a restaurant, um, not a restaurant serving alcohol. And then he was required by the Department of Liquor to get um, on the uh, ballot uh, because that area of uh, Yellow Springs was I don't know if you, I guess it's a dry area, yeah. yeah. And so um, that was uh, approved by the voters, but somewhere in that time frame, because that was that happened in 2014, he had a lot of difficulties in getting his business um, doors open because he had some some issues with uh, either the health department or building regs. And it took another at least a year almost before he actually opened his doors. <clears throat> and in that transition, John Young was getting ready to leave. Um, I had, by the time he opened his doors, I had just started. So he, I think he probably thought, the owner thought, that was all he needed was the Department of Liquor Control's vote, and then he was okay. He didn't realize he needed to come back for a conditional use hearing because that is our requirement in the zoning code. So we're just cleaning that up um, and Mr. Rainey is going ahead and moving forward with that. So is that required every time? 
if, if, if the business would change hands again and they would want to serve alcohol, would they have to come for conditional? No, not really. I, I, I talked to our um, attorney about that, and he said it's not really a change of use. Um, he thought well, you could go either way with it. I mean, you could have them come in and, and restate their case again, but it's not actually a change of use. So Mr. Rainey's having to do it because the previous business did not come in and get a conditional use. Correct. Yeah. I see. So the conditional use pretty much most of the time sticks with a, an address. Uh, if it's not a I, I kind of yeah. question that a bit, but you know, I mean, in going back and forth and, and talking with our attorney, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, sometimes it's better to just, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's and have them come in sure. uh, with, with a completely new new business, but I guess you could. If, it, if the use isn't changing, if it was, you know, the, the thing for me is that when you know, if it if it was a bakery and it's a conditional use, then so someone else coming in, it's a new new ownership. You know, we might want them to go through it simply just so they understand what the requirements are. I mean, yeah. they may operate their business differently. That's where I was kind of differing with our attorney on that. Their hours of operation might be different. Their the amount of noise, the uh, fumes coming from what they're making. I, you, yeah. So, if any well, of the, the, the Ohio Building Code requires any new tenant to get an occupancy permit through county building regulation. In order to get that occupancy permit, they have that applicant has to go through a zoning permit process, no matter what. So, given that this is a new owner of a new business, he's got to go through the process all over. I think would. I mean, would you would you lean so on that side that it should that they should always go through another hearing, even though they may be doing the same exact use? Um, if it's called for a conditional uh -huh. use for that particular thing, such as liquor, I would say so. If it yeah. were like you said for a bakery, no, you can immediately sign off. But if there is conditions, if it's conditional use, what they're doing. If it's conditional, what they're doing. Okay. Like yeah. if it's not just allowed, right? That's right. the only time right. it would. You know, and then I still question whether or not the liquor permit goes with the owner, the old owner to the new owner, or if this new owner is carrying a new license from his existing establishment. He's actually um, taking the old owner's license to and transferring it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I think that makes a big difference in how we look at this application because we're really not changing any use conditions. Yes. We're just cleaning up. We're just cleaning it up. The paperwork. Yeah. See, if it was some, if, I think that if the applicant were taking an existing liquor license and expanding that to a new location, that would be different than that old owner, this guy buying the license from that old owner which really doesn't change the use of that particular establishment. And Brian, did you want to expand anything on that? You can stand uh, up at the podium and just, yeah, okay. yeah just maybe you want to. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is the situation that he is just transferring a license to me. We already went through the process and it's actually ready to go with the Department of Liquor Control. I just have to get my health, health inspection done first. Um, um, you know, in all technicalities, it was really just sort of you know, transferred along with the lease and everything else. I'm leasing going. You're not allowed to lease a liquor license. Right. You know, it's just, you know, I'm going to pay for the liquor license with the yearly fee and all that, but he just transferred as part of the deal. Um, but it is the existing liquor license that he had voted on and that he had already owned, had voted on, brought into town, and it's just being transferred into my name. So that's a story there. Yeah, I mean, if you were, if you were a tenant, he was still maintaining an owner, and you were basically right. a new management company running his business. That would be a whole different thing, too. You wouldn't even have oh, to be yeah. here. Right, yeah, right. yeah, right. exactly. Right. Yeah. right, so right. Yeah, you know, not, there's yeah. all these it's little just, particulars just having an effect on why I think that the conditional use kicks in. Mm -hmm. Well, he okay. still would have to be here because they never did a conditional use in the first place. Well, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, well, true. Yeah. 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 So if if, we hopefully if, don't if have he to do now that. Uh, if you decide to close that business, then mm -hmm. someone else would have to have a completely different liquor. They'd have to yeah, apply right, for yeah. a new license. And, and the deal is that if um, lease runs up and I don't continue to 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 carry it, 
Um, we just transfer back to Tony's name. If, if I was to go out of business or whatever, the liquor license would just go back into his name, in which case if you know somebody else stepped in, then he'd have to go through that whole process of transferring to them at that point, so. Okay, so do we want to talk about the conditions um, on this use? Well, I mean, he meets all of the <clears throat> the parking requirements. He was spot on for the amount of uh, uh, usable floor area, um, for the amount of parking spaces. Uh, there really isn't, uh, he isn't, uh, he's just changed the face, uh, the copy face of uh, of what is a non-conforming sign now, that pole sign, but he's, um, he's only changing the, the face of that with <clears throat> his new business name. Um, he's not doing anything with outdoor lighting. Um, uh, they're just, I just saw nothing. I don't have any objections to this application based on that. His hours of operation aren't unreasonable either. Um, I, I just had a question about the property. It mm -hmm. seems like there's some of the frontage that's owned by another Yeah, parcel. I thought that was weird too. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the parcel where the uh, car wash is. Oh. Owns the frontage almost, yeah, all, all the way across my property and even into the next one. I saw that too when I was looking at the property map, yeah. So the driveway um, would go through yeah, they there. technically go through their property and their frontage. Um, I have it has made me wonder if I need to talk to Doug and and you know make sure it's okay. I use the front of his you know part of his property. <laughs> I would imagine that that's kind of an kind of an unspoken, uh, unwritten uh, you know. Now there's an access easement that runs across that property yeah. to all the businesses down there. Oh, okay. You know, yeah. and if it were to get if it were to ever get replatted. Mm -hmm. Those business was they're non-conforming because none of them have frontage. <laughs> oh yeah, right. So we couldn't literally replat it, and that it, was it for whatever reason. Yeah, Roberts decided to maintain that property and mm -hmm. grant those access easements. I have just no clue. Right. I mean, I'm just hoping he mows the grass up front. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, paying taxes on it too. Right. right. True. You know, yeah. I mean, that just doesn't That's make right. any sense yeah. to me. That doesn't. Hmm. Yeah. I'm good with it. Mm -hmm. I I think the you know the people living there have have approved it, um, mm -hmm. and that's more than we usually get in, when we do this kind of thing. I'm excited to see a new business in town and yeah. one with a, a very Absolutely. interesting menu. Yeah, I I checked that out. That there's pretty one thing I know is going to happen. The food's going to be good. That's you know. So. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is time or place, but just reading through this made me realize a question that I might as well ask you guys, because um, I am planning on being open 11 to 9 p.m. I thought maybe you were down the road or something, if there's demand, because we're planning on delivering food. And um, um, if there's demand, I might stay open later, you know, stay open until midnight or something. Do well, Should I come back here at that point? I think that we should just probably vote that in now if we want yes. to oh, okay. go ahead right. and extend this. That would be this. one of our conditions if you request of us to <clears throat> mm -hmm. change your hours of operation or have us consider your hours of operation for, yeah. say, midnight on a weekend and yeah. during the week. Yeah. Make that statement publicly now. Okay. Well, that's, I, mean, um, I mean, to get it all out in the open, the liquor license, um, because, you know, I'm saying midnight, possibility I'd stay open until 2 a.m. Uh, my liquor license says that I would be in the in Department of Liquor Control, um, says I am legally allowed to deliver beer and wine in original sealed containers. And I thought if, if, if it did end up to, to where there's the demand for that kind of thing, um, that, that we would offer delivery of just, you know, appetizers and basically beer and wine up until 2 a.m. if we're crazy enough to do that. Um, so would that be the doors being open until 2 a.m.? No, we would close the, the dining room at 9. If, okay. Yeah, I've always, if, if I was really going to do this, we'd close the dining room at 9 and just have a delivery driver and a cook until 2, you know, sitting there until 2 a.m. basically. Would that be something that we needed to approve through this? Delivery? 
I mean, that wouldn't necessarily be open, but we can put that in there. But I think you can specify okay. that um, that it's while on, the, yeah. the there wouldn't be dining service during those hours, that the, the business would be open for delivery until X time. And is that the days, all the days that you're open? Uh, probably just or Friday, just, Saturday, okay. if I was going to do that. Yeah. 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 So it's very um, theoretical <clears throat> at the moment, you know. <laughs> I mean, we really don't have anything that talks about delivery so much as we have like drive-through, which is also a conditional use, um, but that you wouldn't be doing a drive-through service. No, it would simply no. be carry-out, like. Right, yeah. Yeah. Would Are you there... deliver it, or would you just come and pick it up? Um, it would, it, I think it would just be, just be delivery, just you delivery. know, at that point. I guess I haven't thought about that. Or we could pick it up, then you'd have to unlock. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Maybe even have a, a, an extra person in the dining room or something, too, you know. Um, You're certainly not going to use the drive through window to yeah. deliver. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I'd consider that, but well, I don't know. It's just you got to, you know, you got to get that drive through sign working again and all that, get that whole communication system going, too. Um, well, and, you know, now that they mentioned that, <laughs> I, you know, I, believe me, I've right, had way too many here. ideas. Because yeah, exactly. yeah. uh, yeah. I have had the idea back. of just using that window as like an express pickup window. Like you, you place your order, you come and pick it up just at the window, yeah. kind of like you know pizza places do. Um, but if a drive-through is a special use request, then we would have to address that too, wouldn't we? Well, yeah. the original applicant did not close that window. Oh, okay. For a drive-through, so if I you're see wanting to bring that back mm -hmm. then I, it certainly would be a condition that we would have to consider right yeah in this application just to make sure that you've got all your bases covered yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be anything you could do tonight because we didn't really publicly notice yeah that, that's so, true yeah. i'm bringing this up now right yeah <laughs> yeah but i mean down the road that's something you okay consider. Yeah. well no I, why would we have to republicize that because that is a conditional use a drive-through and it's a different kind and than it we're talking about. Oh, it's a different application from what he's <coughs> he didn't he now. didn't notice it as a drive-through yeah right. did we yeah, notice yeah. it as the hours that he's asking for here could we can mm -hmm. we change that? oh we can yeah. change that kind okay. of stuff at this level yeah okay. absolutely. so the hours would be okay and so what were you like i said the hours are we're sticking with 11 to 9 for a while believe me with, with two restaurants, I, 11 to 9 would be just fine by me. You know? and what about you, uh, outdoor dining? Um, I'd like to get to that point. That's going to be a whole new ball game, though. I mean, you know, building a patio, building inspectors. We've all that, approved. You know. Well, we. Oh, really? We, you know, he, he, remember he ended up pulling it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so he never actually so went through the hearing for that. Really? He was oh, going to okay. do an outdoor patio, mm. yes. We yeah. talked about it. Yes, we did. Okay. So um, right now it's You'll be able to look 11 a.m. to okay. 9 p.m. Right. Uh, every day but Tuesday, and then you want what do you want extended? Um, I guess up until 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Okay, so 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday, and Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Does anyone want to make that motion? Do have we, we have had the public more? hearing? Opened it and no. closed it? Thank you, you Susan. <laughs> you opened it, but you haven't closed it. Okay. Um, so I opened the public hearing, and then I do ask for citizens' comments, right? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, any more discussion up here? I, I don't Do I have hear any. a motion? Well, I can put a motion on the table that we accept the application with the following conditions. The change of hours, um, as Denise wrote down, whatever those might be, um, that he has not planned to open the drive through or do exterior dining without additional applications. Um, I always have the condition that he get health department and building department approval sure. before yeah. this application kicks in. And that was it. I second the yeah. motion. Um, do you want to read that back and then call the roll? 
Um, yeah, let's see what let's see what we got here. So, uh, the motion is to accept the application with the change of hours to Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday, Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Got it. Um, and this is assuming no plans to ins to install a, a drive-through or exterior dining areas. Well, you know what? Here, I'm wondering if you want to put that in only because if he comes back. It almost sounds as if you're saying, but we don't want those things. He, but what mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. motion was Pro with a conditional approval. use. Without more approval. Without, a con without yeah. another yeah. hearing. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. I didn't hear you say that. OK. Yeah. So it would just be a separate application. OK. Yes. That, all right, that yeah. clears okay. that up. Um, mm -hmm. And with health and di health um, department and department of? Just health department approval. Health department approval. OK, got it. And Styles is Building the second. Department. Oh, you did say that? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I wrote dining department. I was like, that can't be right. Building department approval, got it. Okay, Doden. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Styles. Yes. Yes. Donnell? Yes. Hell's hell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thanks for having a special hearing for me, guys. Yeah. I really appreciate it with helping expedite this. So. Yeah, good luck. Welcome. Really good it. luck. We're hungry. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That's not great. All right. He's always He's hungry. hungry. And I look forward to harassing Carla on Facebook along with you in the future. So it's always a good time. <laughs> harassing Carla on Facebook. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, that sounds cool. really great. All right. All right. Well, when when do you anticipate? You know, I, I keep saying the 8th, but just today I decided I'm looking at the 15th now. <laughs> Which month? Uh, oh, cool. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you mean of March? Of March yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it just keeps, uh, there's just a lot to do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so but we're getting there. We're getting okay, there so I need to close yeah. the right. meeting, right? Any oh, month, month, we we do, we're no. not quite done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank yeah, you, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so next on the agenda, we need to um, elect. Let's see if first if anybody was beg. willing to volunteer. <laughs> beg, beg, uh, offer as tribute someone <laughs> as representative to the active transportation committee who needs when. It's about once a month, and I believe their next meeting is March. Something. Uh, is it in the evening or daytime? I think they're late afternoon. Late afternoon. Like 4 I'll do that. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. I've already been beat up about so. Outstanding. So, all right. And I right. submit. At home. <laughs> no, but. Um. All right. And then our next meeting is on the. The 12th of March, we will have a conditional use application for uh, an accessory dwelling unit at 107 Cliff Street. It will be um, for uh, an accessory uh, structure garage with the dwelling unit on top. It's uh, Mr. Holyoke's um, NLB straw bale <coughs> construction. And um, and then hopefully we can delve into our process more for how we want to do the, uh, the comprehensive plan. Tackling. Comprehensive yeah. plan. Okay. Would it would it would I think they want me to like for you? I mean, everybody received something from received all of the, the electronic. electronic. You know, I got the electronic, but I would like it printed out. Is that possible? Well, of uh, all of those, or just the main oh. one. You mean like the, the 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 last one that we did? Yes, yes. the last one that yes. we did. Okay. okay, with the attachments or without? See, we got a hard. I got a hard copy of the plan, but just the but none of the um, amendments or non amendments. I'll, I'll print all of them, yeah. but just because I think you guys are going to be wangling with what to include where and okay. whether the okay. documents are relevant. So I'll just go ahead yeah. and print print all the attachments. Okay, Thank I, I you. Would, and, you know, what would be nice um, is this time, unlike the 2010, which kind of started in like 2007, 2008 was the first draft, and I think it finally wasn't finalized until 2010, is there were just so many attachments to it that it would be nice to actually have some of that in the document this yeah. time. You know, uh, especially now we, they want to also consider the complete streets policy. Yeah. Just have that embedded yes. into the 
yes. comprehensive plan rather than as another attachment. Yeah. But I know, Frank, you'd said that you'd be able to help with that oh, yeah. too as well. So, um, what would you want me to then just bring? Will this work starting on page? Is there a. Do we want to? I think we need read? to discuss in that meeting how we're going to tackle, tackle it. it. and yeah. Just have think, everything in front of us. Seeing it yeah. all first. I yeah. think will help give us and, some and, and having some time during that meeting. And if anybody meeting. wanted to even do a subgroup, you know, yeah. and wanted to meet with me during the daytime hours or anything, yeah. you know, we can discuss we that. Can do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Oh, yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Okay. Now we're done. Now we're done. Yeah.